Hey everybody, welcome to PTW Amps in Quebec, Canada. On the bench we have a newly restored 1960 Fender Super. Uh, this is the 6G4 model. Uh, the date code on this amp dates it to March 1960. Um, so this is a very, very early Super. Um, in fact, it even has sort of features on the back that I'll show you later that suggest that uh, this is so early in the production run that it hadn't even really acquired uh, its stock labeling and so on. <clears throat> Very typical of the early supers, the really early ones, from the beginning of 1960. Um, the volume in each channel is the third control along. Now, you probably, in any other, almost any other Fender amp, you think volume and then the tone controls, volume coming first. Here the volume is the third, so that is one way if you see an old uh, um, super, brown face super, to uh, figure out that it is a very early one uh, dating from 1960. By the time they get to 1961, the controls go the other way around, um, more like what you would uh, see on a, a later blackface amp, that type of thing. Um, as you probably just heard at the beginning, these amps have a uh, very unique tone um, among the Fender amps, sort of somewhere situated between the, uh, the gnarlier tweed sound of the late 1950s and then the cleaner blackface, uh, along with some of the, some of the layout is, is more reminiscent of the later blackfaces that would start coming out in uh, uh, around 1964. So, <clears throat> this amp um, has been restored, and uh, I'll tell you exactly what I did. It uh, came in, and let me show you here. So this is a portion of the original cabinet. These amps were never issued as heads only, um, say in the way that uh, the, the basements of the period were. Um, this has been chopped down. Um, this is a very common thing. Uh, back in the 80s and 90s when, uh, you know, other amp companies had kind of acquired the cachet a little bit more of a fender, people would basically take, a, you know, a reciprocating saw or something and, and chop down the combo cabinets into a head, uh, which is kind of a sad thing. Now, this was recovered. These originally would have been in the brown uh, Nubtex Tolex, which you see here. Um, this had been recovered in blonde. So... Some of the original hardware, the handle, um, the corners, the logo, the chassis itself, and all the electronics inside are all original. So basically what this needed was a new replica cabinet. Uh, so what I did is uh, basically copied the exact dimensions, uh, same grill cloth style, everything of the original 1960. So it's the original fender chassis um, and hardware. Uh, just the cabinet, and of course the Tolexing on the cabinet is uh, is new. Um, you know, unfortunately an amp loses some of its value when it is no longer all original, but um, to my mind, uh, there is a, you know, a, a, a joy for me anyway in restoring these things, to, uh, at least to, uh, to uh, as close as possible to their original state. Um, the original speakers were gone from this amp, uh, so I installed a pair of Eminence Alnico uh, speakers. I'll turn around the amp a little bit later, show you the back. Uh, the usual maintenance, um, recapping, it's been recapped with all Sprague Atom capacitors, the good quality stuff. Um, sounding pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to shut up for a bit here and play. Um, so you heard the vibrato channel. This is a two-channel amp. Uh, we've got the normal channel here, the clean channel. I'll play a little bit in that. Has a little less breakup, a little bit of a different tone. Um, and then I'll I'll play some uh, some more stuff on the uh, uh, on the vibrato channel. I'm using a Stratocaster with a humbucker in the bridge, just a very basic Stratocaster, straight into the amp, no pedals involved here. pickup on a strat on the uh, normal channel. I'm going to go to the bridge pickup 
Back to the vibrato channel and crank this up a little bit so you can hear uh, the, the, the pretty cool uh, natural breakup that these amps have. Um, you know, they don't break up like a Marshall or anything, but they, they have the presence control, um, something that uh, was retained from uh, the basement of the, of the late 50s and later used in, in Marshall amps. Uh, and of course, this wonderful tremolo that you heard at the beginning. So I'm going to play it just without the tremolo, cranked up a little bit uh, with some power chords so you can hear this. Uh, you can hear the breakup on this thing. Unlike the later um, black face fenders and the silver face fenders, uh, this amp has a very unique tremolo. It's actually, it has a, a kind of pitch shifting um, that goes on that, that gives it almost the effect of a, of a pitch shift um, vibrato, like a true vibrato. It's not actually a true vibrato, it's still tremolo. Um, I won't go into the technical specifics of that, but uh, it, it has a very unique kind of um, um, phasing quality to the tremolo that's uh, uh, quite renowned in this particular, well, the, this and the concert and other uh, of the larger uh, brown face amps. Um, there's a brown face deluxe of this period that has a more standard uh, bias shift tremolo that is a, is a little bit more uh, uh, familiar from sort of the um, the standard, I suppose, whatever you call a standard um, Fender tremolo. Uh, later black faces went back to, well, actually used the opto isolator tremolo. Um, which doesn't have that phase shifting quality to it. So it's only the brown faces you can get that particular sound. Um, they have a, 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 a quality of breakup some, somewhat akin to, I think, the, uh, um, the Tweed amps, a little bit more of a mid-range honk that you would get uh, just a couple of years later, a few years later, when um, Leo Fender designed the Blackface amps. Uh, which have that classic mid scoop and kind of clean, um, you know, clean as as day as the day is long kind of sound. The super uh, you may think is related to the super reverb, but it's probably uh, it's it's about a 35 40 watt amp, so it's probably um, you know sort of a uh, an early an early forerunner to the super reverb. This has two 10 speakers. The later Super Reverb, you know, the classic Blackface Super Reverb would have four tens, running about the same wattage. Um, and of course, the Blackfaces had reverb, spring reverb uh, installed. This amp is non-reverb. This is still from Fender's non-reverb period. Um, I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to turn it off here and turn it around so we can have a look at the back. Uh, once again, as I said earlier, we're looking at an amp that... Uh, is all original except for the cabinet um, and what I did is basically try to replicate just by using uh, as many specifics and as many um, originals uh, as possible. I've had original brown face amps in here so I always uh, take a lot of drawings and pictures whenever I have that opportunity. So the cabinet, we've got the two Emmons new speakers uh, Legend Alnico uh, 1028K speakers, 10 inch, um, running in parallel. There are 8 ohm speakers running in parallel to make 4 ohms. Um, there's this odd, let me bring the camera a little closer here because we've got some interesting little quirks about this amp. Interesting, I guess, if you're a full fledged amp nerd like myself. Um, where later on you would normally have an extension. Here's the speaker jack. There's this thing called Pulse uh, ADJ. So it looks like this was not on any of the later brown faces, at least none of the ones I've seen. So I'm thinking this is some kind of uh, maybe prototype feature that made its way into the early production uh, models of these. As I said, this one dates from March 1960, and to the best of my knowledge, January 1960 is about as early as these uh, as these go. 
The cabinet is all pine, dovetailed pine. I've shellacked it inside. It has a Baltic birch plywood baffle. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the old tubes were already missing when this amp came into the shop. Um, we have the um, capacitor, so-called doghouse under here, where the, uh, the Sprague capacitors were added. Uh, th this thing obviously needed, uh, needed recapping and refurbishing. Um, replica tube chart, if you can see that inside the cabinet. So basically, I just took a, an image of the original uh, fender tube chart and uh, just on the computer made as close as a, a replica as I could just to give it the look. Um, that's basically it. A uh, three prong cord added that necessity of course to uh, these amps that originally would have had two prong cords. So, uh, so you know one of the first things that needs to be done. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Nice look at this uh, pretty cool old amp. And uh, if you want to see uh, some of my other work, just go to PTW Amps or subscribe uh, to my channel. You can find me on Facebook, PTW Amps. In the meantime, thanks for watching.